You're listening to the Unnamed Podcast with your host, Midnight Lunatic. Available on Anchor.fm. Hello, Midnight Crew, and welcome to another installment of Unnamed Podcast. As you know by now, I am your host, Midnight Lunatic, and I'm here to bring you some more news for your lives. But, as always, before we get into business, let's have some fun and look at the fact of the week. And the fun fact of the week is, 80% of mass shooters showed no interest in violent video games, a researcher found. So, after hearing that, why are people still thinking violence in video games are the cause of violence in the world? I know what you guys are thinking. Well, what about the other 20%? What about them? Well, my response to that is, that 20% needs to be signed to the military and deployed somewhere where they're needed. Am I right? No, but jokes aside, I would rather have a low percentage than a high percentage. I mean, we can never get rid of the the crime you know, that's just the way the world is, but I'd rather have a low percentage than a high percentage. Now that we had our fun, let's return to our regular scheduled programming with the first topic of the evening. So, have you guys ever heard or seen a show called Parks and Recreation, or Parks and Rec for short? It's a show you can find on NBC and Netflix as well. That's one of my top favorite shows. It's one of my top five, actually. Uh, Parks and Rec, they did a reunion show. It was kind of a special. They reunited for a special for one night. And if you're a fan like I am, it was amazing to see the entire cast back together. And it was a hilarious special as well. I don't want to give out any spoilers or teasers. So if you're a fan of the show, and even if you're not, go watch it. I'm telling you, you deserve a laugh. It'll make you laugh. But it's better if you if you watch the entire thing. Right now, after watching that special, I actually started Parks and Rec over again. I'm, I'm watching it again, and I'm already, I believe, on season three as of right now. So I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> uh, it'll be what, like my tenth time watching it. I mean, I, that's like I said, it's one of my top five sh- favorite shows, and you know, I got I gotta rewatch my shows. You know, it, it's it doesn't feel right once you end it. And you don't go back to watching it again. It just doesn't feel right. You have to do it. So, within that special, I would have to say that Ron Swanson's parts were were my favorite. Not only in the show, but like in this special, it was funny, if not even funnier than what he did in the show. It was was so cool. So, I want to say thank you to the Park and Rec cast for bringing us comedy and laughter in this time of quarantine. And I hope to see more specials like that because it was just awesome to see. Now, if only my favorite show, The Office, could do something like that, my year would be complete. I love The Office. That is my number one favorite show. I have watched that entire thing about 100 times. No lie. But we'll see what time brings. Maybe The Office will do something like that. Who knows? So on to the next topic. NFL, they are set to release the full 17-week schedule next week. The NFL isn't altering its fall plans, and the league will release its 2020 schedule without any major changes, and that's including a September 10th opener and the Super Bowl on February 7th. And they're also visions of fans in the stands so we can possibly see fans back in the stands espn's chris mortensen reported in mid-april that the league planned to release its schedule based on a full season by may 9th and that's coming up pretty quick the nba and major league baseball have discussed playing at neutral sites such as disney world las vegas or arizona but the nfl doesn't plan to do that now i've heard rumors about the NBA and baseball starting back up. I've I haven't heard anything about them playing at Disney World and Las Vegas. How how would that even work at Disney Disney World? I I don't understand that. But NFL doesn't plan on doing any of that. They're planning on just trying to get the schedule and games back to normal as soon as they can. So we'll see what happens. Um I mean, I I miss football. 
I miss sports. I miss basketball. I miss baseball. I, I miss watching sports, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you do too. So the league is evaluating when players can re-enter the team facilities. The NFL and NFLPA have agreed to keep the buildings closed until every state in which a team resides lifts its stay-at-home mandate. The teams are prepared to conduct off-season workouts and June minicamps virtually. I don't know how that's going to work, but I've seen a lot of NFL stars actually doing their practice at home. You know, they're doing the workouts, they're doing all the stretches, they're doing, you know, like their their little mini workout camps in their backyards. And it's cool to see that. They're they're working hard, they're still trying to keep going and keep, you know, active. The NFL's commissioner, Roger Goodell, will not accept a salary during this pandemic. So the league raised more than a hundred million for the corona relief during the NFL draft, which is amazing. Not only is Roger Goodell not taking a salary during this, but they raised over $100 million for the corona relief. That's amazing to see. I don't know about you guys, but that's cool. So to turn more on the darker side of the news, have you guys heard anything about Family Dollar? Well, there was apparently a shooting that occurred at Family Dollar and a security guard was killed. So three people were charged in the killing of a store security guard over the virus mask. So this happened in Flint, Michigan. A woman and her adult son and husband have been charged in a fatal shooting of a security guard guard who refused to let her daughter enter a family dollar in Michigan because she wasn't wearing a mask, a face mask to protect her against the transmission of the corona. So she couldn't get in. They denied her entrance because she just wasn't wearing any any mask. She wasn't wearing protection. And a lot of stores are doing this where you need a mask to enter the store. A lot of stores are still doing this to this day, even though the states have uplifted some of their stay-at-home orders. People are still not wearing the mask, and that's what happened. So the security guard... His name was Calvin. I'm not going to pronounce any full names. It's Calvin was shot Friday at the store just north of downtown Flint a short time after telling the daughter that she had to leave uh, because she lacked a mask. Uh, Teague, which is the mother of the daughter, uh, uh, argued with the security guard before leaving and two men later came to the store and her husband and i guess the son i'm guessing from this are charged with two first degree premeditated murder and gun charges so they're also charged with violating the governor's executive order mandating that all customers and employees must wear face masks inside grocery stores so they're getting charged with that also and the witnesses identified um, Bishop as the man who who shot, you know, the security guard. So the witnesses identified Bishop, which was the guy who shot the security guard and shot him in the back of the head. Now, Teague and the whole rest of them, well, Teague got arrested. And the police are looking for the husband and son. So Teague was the only one, which is the woman, was the only one arrested. And the police are still looking for the husband and son. So they have no idea where they went. They, they're still trying to look. And no information has been released about the daughter, who has not been charged in the shooting. So the daughter looks like she just got completely away from it. The mother got arrested. And the husband and son are the ones that actually did something to the security guard and they escaped from the scene. They fled from the scene and police are looking for him. So this is, this is a messy story. Um, Condolences to the family and friends for that security guard, you know, as if Flint, Michigan doesn't already have enough going on with the water crisis going on, you know, and now they got this and the pandemic it it's, it's looking bad in that direction, but condolences to the family and friends of that security guard. It's it's been a crazy week. 
And a lot of you may have heard about this next topic. So Eminem, you know, the legendary rapper Eminem, he came face to face with a home invader who slipped past his own security and made his way to his his living room. Um, they said in the interview that the security was sleeping, but when they meant that, they meant that figuratively, figuratively, and a lot of people actually believe that he was sound asleep, but they meant that figuratively, like he was, he was sleeping on the job, you know, like he was, he was, he was slacking. He was, he wasn't doing his job. Um, so we're told that the security team was on the front of the property and the intruder snuck through the back. The break-in went down earlier uh, this month at 4 a.m. at Eminem's Detroit area home in a gated community. And according to the law enforcement, the suspect, 26-year-old Matthew David Hughes, used a paving stone to smash a kitchen window and climbed inside the house. So not only did he sneak past security, but he also damaged property by smashing the kitchen window with a rock and what's funny is if you know Eminem's music there is a song by Eminem that talks about a guy named Matthew actually breaking inside his house and states in the song that it's a 26 year old and what's funny is the guy's name is Matthew he's 26 years old it, it it's crazy it's like M knows a future but an alarm went off and it woke up Eminem, and M got up and found the intruder in his living room. So I don't know what happened. They don't release any statements on what really, really happened. But the intruder was detained, and the guards came and grabbed the guy. So I'm thinking that M fought the guy off and detained him until the guards came is what I'm getting from this. I'm not too sure. So the police were called and rushed to the home. And Hughes was taken into custody and booked on charges of first-degree home invasion and malicious destruction of a building, which both are felonies. So it didn't appear that the intruder was trying to steal anything. And this is where it gets interesting. He wanted a face-to-face -face with Eminem. Don't know why. I don't know why he thought this was the right thing to do to do that. But he is now being held on a $50,000 bond at the county jail. So a lot of interesting stuff is happening this week, guys. A lot of interesting stuff. Not only do we get that security shooting, now we got Eminem's house getting breaking into. I mean, what's next? What's next? This is getting ridiculous. And get this, guys. Get this. Have you been looking at the news lately? Have you been looking on what's trending, you know, everywhere right now? What everyone is starting to worry about because this is this is new to America. Well, you might have heard it, you might have not. Murder Hornets. Well, they're here in America. Like we didn't already have enough going on, right? Murder Hornet. I can't even say the word, guys. Murder Hornets have now shown up and is killing our honeybees. And by killing our honeybees, it can be a threat for our food supply as well. We all know that honeybees are the reason for our, you know, plants survival. You know, they pollinate our, our plants, our flowers, our trees, you know, all that. And without honeybees, we're, we're going to lose some food. So with the queens of these murder hornets, they can grow up to two inches long. And that's, that's pretty big. Uh, the Asian giant hornets can use their, their mandible shaped claws they're, they're like spiked shark fins to wipe out a honeybee hive in a matter of hours. They decapitate the bees and they're flying around with the thoraxes to feed their, their young. And for larger targets, such as like us, the hornet's potent venom and stinger is long enough to penetrate a beekeeping suit. So even if we were to send beekeepers in, there's still a chance that the beekeepers will be stung and 
that's that's not something we want. We don't want our beekeepers to go in the dangerous way and try to get these out when knowing that you know they're they're long enough to to penetrate the suit. So we don't know how exactly we're going to deal with this, but they are trying to get all these murder hornets eradicated by the summertime. Because uh, if not, then what's going to happen is a lot of these murder hornets are going to start growing and expanding and they're going to start mating more and they're going to get spread all over the nation. And we don't want that. So the sting is is a combination like it's excruciating and it, it feels what they have described like a hot plate driving into their skin so it's it's like taking a hot plate you know like fresh off a thousand degree oven and just driving it right into your your skin anywhere on your body and the way to discover this was in washington ted mcfalls which is a, a beekeeper he pulled his truck up to check on his group of hives in in November. So this has been going on for a while. So I don't understand why we're just now hearing about this. But he spotted um, from, from his window bee carcasses on the ground. And when he looked closer, he saw a pile of, of bees from, from the colony in front of the hive. And there was more carnage going on inside the hive and thousands on thousands of bees were decapitated their heads were torn from their bodies and there was just there was no sign of who actually did it but not too far away they actually spotted the the murder hornets making their way through through different hives so he wasn't too sure if it was the murder hornets that did it or if it was something else but by by the way it's looking, I mean, thousands of bees, heads torn off. That's exactly what murder hornets do to their victims. They, they tear off their heads, they take the hives, they destroy everything, and they leave. That's just what they do. So, I don't know what to think about this. I'm hoping that somewhere along these couple months, they can eradicate these Asian you know hornets because if that's if that's in Washington I'm not that far away from Washington so if you're on the east coast it's going to get you late but like for me it it's game over and I don't want them here in Arizona like I already have a lot of wasps and bees over here as it is but to have these murder hornets now over here like come on now so let's just let's just hope for the best on that situation and hope that they can do something about it. I'm I'm hoping for the best, but you never know. Um, but in other words, what do you guys think about this? It's crazy, right? I mean, it's it's nothing new to Asia. They've had these for a while, and the bees over there have actually become immune. And have a self-defense mechanism that they use against these. But our American bees, they've never seen anything like this. It's like facing an alien to them. Like, they don't know how to deal with this. And I I, I, I gotta be honest, I kind of feel bad for the bees. You know, that's that's like us, you know, trying to fight off something that we've never dealt with before. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Like... Like, the way we are, we're facing this virus, you know, like, these murder hornets are, like, the coronavirus of the bees. Like, they're just, they're taking them out one by one. It's crazy. Um, but trying to switch off the subject, have you guys checked out that new episode of Rick and Morty? I have yet to check it out still. I know I'm behind. I know I said I was going to check it out, but things have been so busy, which is kind of why I had to delay the podcast. Um... I've started back up work slowly but surely. Um, just a lot of things going on. Uh, Sam, my dog, got sick. I had to take care of her for a couple days. I mean, it was, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy week. 
So I apologize for the delay, guys. I am doing my best to try to get out as much content for you guys as possible. Um, I know I haven't been uploading on my channel recently, like the past couple days have been dry for me. Um, but like I said, I've just had a lot going on and I promise to get back as much as I can. But until then, I might just have to stick with the podcast for now. Uh, up until I can get myself in that rhythm again with everything else going on, like me going back to work and stuff, it's kind of affecting you know how much free time I have. Um, but I'm gonna try my best to keep going and do what I'm doing. And if you guys can tell from my voice, I'm a little sniffly right now, I'm a little backed up. Um, nothing to worry about though, I'm not getting sick. This is just how I am, you know, especially like in the morning times, I wake up. And by the way, I'm recording this in the morning time. Um, but I usually wake up with a stuffy nose. So I just take like allergy medicine and it goes away. It, it, it's fine, guys. I'm not getting sick. Don't worry. Uh, but it's been a crazy week. We'll see what this week brings. And I am recording this on the 5th. And some of you may know what that means. Some of you may not. Sing in the bio. And what better day to fall on than Taco Tuesday? I wanted to get me some tacos, some beers, have a party, enjoy the day, enjoy myself. But I gotta go to work. So there goes my day. There goes my plan. But I'm not gonna be at work all day. So I guess I still have some time to do that. But I'm not gonna have the whole day to myself like the way I wanted to. But that's just how life is. Anyways, guys. It is the end of this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please. Guys, I, I don't want to say this no more. Please get involved. Please, please let me know what what topics you guys have that you find interesting. And let's let's have a discussion, guys. This, this is the last time I'm gonna say this. I'm not gonna force you guys anymore. I'm not gonna say nothing else. If you guys want to get involved, you guys get involved. If not, it's totally fine. But I would just like to see more involvement. Anyways, that's it. I'm done. That's all. Stay safe, guys. Love you all. Take care. And we'll see you next week. This is Midnight Lunatic, Unnamed Podcast, signing out.